All right, welcome back freshmen. Um, we're gonna start act three today. Um, just a quick overview of some of the things, um, review of some of the issues and some readings of certain passages. All right, again, hopefully you're reading this on your own, but I thought I'd throw this in there um, just to help some of you out. All right, so um, time, um, half an hour has passed, you know, an hour, several minutes, whatever, since we left off um, with the scene with Romeo and the nurse um, in a garden or a church or a town square, depends on where the director sets it, um, exchanging information about when the wedding is going to happen and what to do afterwards. Romeo knows. All right. Anyway, so act three, scene one, um, enter with Benvolio, Mercutio, and some of their, their gang. All right. I pray you, good Mercutio, let's retire. The day is hot, the capitals are abroad, and if we meet, we shall not escape a brawl. For now, these hot days is the mad blood stirring. All right, if we were in school right now, some kids would be getting in trouble for fights because it's getting warm outside, and for some reason that makes people want to fight. So the mad blood is stirring. Thou art like one of these fellows that when he enters the confines of a tavern, claps me his sword upon the table and says, God send me no need of thee and by the operation of the second cup, draws him on the drawer, when indeed there is no need. Am I like such a fellow? Come, come, thou art as hot a jack, and I moved as any in Italy, and as soon moved be moody, and as soon moody to be moved. All right, more puns, all right? Um, moved to be moody, moved as in provoked you, or something moves you emotionally, um, to be moody or to be angry, but then also moody to be moved, a mood, you know, you're, you wanna go fight someone or something. And to what? Nay, and there were two such, we should soon have none shortly, for one would kill the other. Thou what? That will quarrel with the man that hath a hair more or hair less in his beard than thou hast. That will quarrel for a man with a cracking for cracking nuts, having no other reason than because thou hast hazel eyes. What eye but such an eye would spy out such a quarrel? Thy head is as full of quarrels as an egg is full of meat, and yet thy head hath been beaten as addle as an egg for quarreling. Thou hast quarreled with a man for coffee in the street, because he hath wakened thy dog that hath lain asleep in the sun. Didst thou not fall out with a tailor for wearing his new doublet before Easter, with another for tying his new shoes with old ribbon? And yet thou wilt tutor me from quarreling? And I were apt to quarrel as, in any, as thou art? Any man should buy the fee simple of my life for an hour and a quarter. The fee simple, oh, simple. All right, so what they're talking about here is simply that, you know, Mercutio is saying, you're gonna fight for any reason. Now we already know that Benvolio is the peacemaker. He's not going to be a fighter, all right? So why is Mercutio doing this? And it all depends. Sometimes you'll see a production where Mercutio is uh, more mad about things and wants to fight. Sometimes he's just being playful, all right? He's just joking with him, all right? So, enter Tybalt, Petruchio, and others. By my head, here come the Capulets. By my heel, I cannot. All right, in other words, who cares if the Capulets are coming? It doesn't matter. Follow me close, says Tybalt. I don't know if you're following along with the text, which you should be. Follow me close, for I will speak to them. Gentlemen, good day, and a word with one of you. Oh, but if one word with one of us, couple it with something, make it a word and a blow. You shall find me apt enough to that, sir, and you will give me occasion. Could you not take some occasion without giving? Mercutio, thou consortest with Romeo. In other words, you associate with Romeo. Do you know Romeo? All right. Mercutio, consort? Why? Dost thou make us minstrels? And thou make minstrels of us look to hear nothing but discords. Here's my fiddlestick. Here's that shall make you dance. Sounds consort. All right. So, again, we're working with puns here. Consort, as in to play, as in to play music, as in, ha, here's my music, all right, here's my, here's my instrument, and this is the sword, if you want to play, let's, let's play, all right? We talk here in the haunt of public men, pu pu public haunt of men, either withdraw unto some private place, or reason coldly of your grievances, or else depart, here all eyes gaze on us, all right, the only one with a bit of brain in his head here is Benvolio, because he knows that, a few scenes ago, the prince said anyone who's caught fighting will be killed. So it's like, let's go talk about this somewhere else, not in public. If you want to fight, let's go to Borden Park, way back in the woods. No one will notice. They'll notice. All right. 
So, Mercutio, men's eyes were made to look and let them gaze. I will not budge for no man's pleasure, I. Then, peace be with you, sir. Here comes my man. And to Romeo, so he's not, I'm done with you guys. I want to talk to him. But I'll be hanged, sir, if he wear your livery. He said, here's my man, as in here's the guy I want to talk to, but then here's my man also can be here's my servant. All right, livery is you would wear the same, you would wear an outfit, you would wear a certain set of colors that would show you were a servant of a specific family. So here's my man, but I'll be hanged, sir, if you wear your livery. Mary, go before to field, he'll be your follower. Your worship in that sense may call him man. Romeo, the love I bear thee can afford no better term than this. Thou art a villain. Tybalt, the reason that I have to love thee doth much excuse the appertaining rage to such a greeting. Villain am I none, therefore farewell. I see thou knowest me not. All right, so remember who Tybalt is. Tybalt's Juliet's cousin. All right, if you are going to marry someone, is it a good idea to get in a fight with their cousin? Probably not. All right, so... Um, the problem is, this is also something else, this is dramatic irony, because you know why Romeo won't fight Tybalt. But to Tybalt, what, is this, what does this seem like? Does it seem insulting? Does it seem like Romeo's just trying to get out of a fight and he's being a coward? Either way, that's not good when you're dealing with someone that wants to fight you. Back to the text. Boy, this shall not excuse the injuries that thou hast done me. Therefore, turn and draw. I do protest I never injured thee, but love thee better than thou canst devise. Till thou shalt know this reason of my love, and so, good Capulet, which name I tender as dearly as mine own, be satisfied. All right, so dramatic irony again. We understand why Romeo is saying this, but to Tybalt, it just seems like he's mocking him. All right, all Romeo has to do is come out and say, hey, I'm going to marry your cousin in a few hours, so can we not do this now? And a lot of people argue that. The problem is, if he says that, then what? That's right, Tybalt's going to go, well, you're marrying my cousin? Tybalt was insulted because he showed up to a party he wasn't invited to. And how's he going to feel if he's married his cousin? Either way, there's no good way out of this. Excuse me, just a bit more espresso. All right. O oh, calm, dishonorable, vile submission. Ah, staccato carries it away. Tybalt, you rat catcher, come will you walk? All right, so Mercutio is upset because it looks to him like Romeo is being a coward. So he's like, you know what, Romeo, I'll step in here and fight. And again, it all depends on the director and what the director wants. Um, the version, um, the Zeffirelli version, the Zeffirelli production, um, that I will try to show you a scene or two here. I'll try to include that here. Um, has Mercutio joking with Tybalt, and Tybalt then starts to become a little more lighthearted, and he starts joking with Mercutio, and everything's okay. Other times, Tybalt and Mercutio are, are, are really mad at each other, or Mercutio is mad because Romeo is being a coward, so he steps in, or he steps in because he thinks that Romeo's still in love with and his heart's broken, and he can't fight because he's not all there. Either way, and again, there's so many ways to interpret this and so many ways to play it out and act it. Shakespeare's wonderful, folks. All right, so, um, Tybalt, what wouldst thou have with me? Good king of cats, nothing but one of your nine lives that I mean to make bold with all. And as you shall use me hereafter, dry beat the rest of the eight. Will you pluck your sword out of its pilcher by the ears? Make haste, let mine be about your ears, ere it be out. I am for you. Gentle Mercutio, put up thy rapier, put up thy rapier up. Come, sir, your passado, and they fight. All right, so Romeo is trying to break it up, you know. The problem is they're acting too quickly. They're not telling everyone what they need to know, and bad things happen. It's trashy. We know that. It's going to happen, all right? So, uh, draw, Benvolio. Beat down their weapons. Gentlemen, for shame, forbear this outrage. Tybalt, Mercutio, the prince expressly hath forbid this bandy in Verona streets. Hold, Tybalt, good Mercutio. All right, and at this point, Romeo, trying to be a good friend, gets in between them. All right. It's one thing if you get in between two people and they're just throwing punches, all right? But they've got swords, 
All right, so what happens in the stage directions is Romeo beats down their points and rushes between them. Tybalt, under Romeo's arm, thrusts Mercutio in. So, again, was it an accident? Did Tybalt take advantage of the fact that Mercutio's sword went down and stab him? Again, it all depends on how the director wants to play this, how the actors want to pull it off. All right? So, at this point, Petruchio sees what's happening. Right? Away, Tybalt, and Tybalt, and Petruchio, and all their followers, all the Capulets run off, because they know the prince is going to be around here shortly, and they're in trouble. All right? Mercutio, I'm hurt! A plague on both your houses! I am sped! Is he gone and hath nothing? What, art thou hurt? Ay, ay, a scratch, a scratch, Mary, tis enough. Where is my page? Go, villain, fetch a surgeon. Courage, man, the hurt cannot be much. Now the thing is, Romeo and Edvolio didn't see that he got stabbed, all right? And from before, you will know that Mercutio is a bit of a jokester, all right? And so is he just pulling another joke, or is this real? That's the problem, especially when you just got stabbed and you're bleeding out. I'm assuming he got hit uh, in a vital organ um, because he's going pretty quickly here. No, tis not so deep as a well, nor so wide as a church door, but tis enough. All right, so that's the problem. When you, you, know, when you get stabbed, you don't joke with people and say, oh, it's, you know, it's not so deep as a well, nor wide as a church door, but it, it, it'll be enough. You tell him, hey, I just got stabbed, help me here. His joking gets the better of him here. Twill serve. Ask me tomorrow, and you shall find me a grave man. Get it? Pun, grave man. All right. Grave, serious, grave, in the grave. You got it. All right, good. I am peppered. I warrant for this world. A plague on both your houses. Zounds, a dog, a rat, a mouse, a cat, to scratch a man to death, a braggart, a rogue, a villain that fights by the book of arithmetic. Why the devil came you between us? I was hurt under your arm. Finally, penny drops. I thought all was for the best. Help me into some house, Benvolio, or I shall faint. A plague on both your houses. They have made worms meet of me. I have it, and soundly, to your houses. And everyone goes but Romeo. And sorry, that's the last one for the same Mercutio. Dead. <coughs> Start your death. All right. This gentleman, the prince's near ally, is my very, very friend, hath got this mortal hurt in my behalf. My reputation stained with Tybalt's slander. Tybalt, that an hour hath been my cousin. O oh, sweet Juliet, thy beauty hath made me effeminate. And in my temper, soften valor steel. All right, so again, Romeo's got some issues here. Again, I said earlier, they're not married yet. They're married by the church, but they haven't consummated their marriage yet. So they're not totally married yet. Um, if Lord Capulet comes along and finds Julie, he could whisk her away. Um, and everything would be annulled. All right. Yeah, I know like I need more espresso. Whatever. Hey, have a cup yourself. All right. So, um, He's caught here. His best friend just got killed by Tybalt. You would think normally, you know, especially in a time period like this, where duels are common, you know, it's okay if you kill someone if, you know, it's self-defense. Even now it is, but you know, anyway. Um, should I go after Tybalt? Or should I not? He's my wife's cousin. Nothing says, you know, bad honeymoon more than killing your wife's cousin before you go and consummate your marriage. It's not going to be a good night. Enter Benvolio. Oh, Romeo, Romeo, brave Mercutio is dead. That gallant spirit hath aspired the clouds, which too untimely here did scorn the earth. This day's black fate on more days doth depend. This but begins the womb others must end. All right, and for some reason, Tybalt comes back here. And again, all right, it all depends. Some versions, I mean, this is, again, Shakespeare's malleable. People like to really twist it and do other things with it. Um, you'll see versions of Shakespeare's plays performed in uh, 12th century Japan, all right? Um, sometimes they're on the, on, a, on the deck of a spaceship. All right, um, Shakespeare is universal. Shakespeare can be altered to many different areas. Um, I mean, that's where we get the Lion King. It's Hamlet, all right, they stole it, okay? Um, 
so at this point, Tybalt enters in the original text, all right? Now, if Tybalt came back and Romeo fights him, then it's kind of okay. If Romeo has to go find Tybalt, and then Romeo is caught afterwards, then the legalities are slightly different here, all right? So enter Tybalt. Here comes the fear is Tybalt back again. He gat in triumph and Mercutio slain, away to heaven respected lenity, and fire-eyed fury be my conduct now. Now, Tybalt, take the villain back again that late thou gavest me, for Mercutio's soul was but a little way above our heads, staying for thine to keep him company. Either thou or I or both must go with him. That's an ultimatum. Either you die, I die, or we're both going to die. Don't deal in absolutes. That's not a good idea. Only the Siths do that. All right. Tybalt, thou wretched boy that disconsort him here shall with him hence. This shall determine that. Like, he holds his sword up. This shall determine whether you die or I die. All right, they fight, and he kills Tybalt. Oh, jeez. Okay, future advice. You know, if you learn nothing else from this, don't kill your wife's cousin or husband's cousin. All right? The day of the wedding. It really puts a damper on the festivities. All right. So... Romeo, away, be gone, the citizens are up, and Tybalt slain. Stand not amazed, the prince will doom thee death if thou art taken. Hence be gone, away. Oh, I am fortune's fool. Why dost thou stay? And off Romeo goes. It's fortune's fool. All right, so fortune, lady fortune, lady lock, whatever. Lady fortune, um, back then they thought that fortune, you were either in good fortune or you were out of fortune. Um, and they represent that with a wheel, hence we have wheel of fortune now. And sometimes you're on top of the wheel. And sometimes fortune just spins the wheel randomly and you're on the bottom. Um, and there's really nothing you can do about it. Um, so Romeo's not really taking blame for it. I mean, like, he killed Tibble. He didn't have to kill Tibble. No one made him kill Tibble. He could have just gone to the prince. Go get the police. You know, don't handle it yourself. All right, there's legal channels here. But he didn't. Um, so don't blame fortune. But again, people in the time period, that's what they believed in. All right, they value. All right, here we go. Enter citizens of the watch. Which way ran that he, he that killed Mercutio? Tybalt that murder, which way ran he? All right, Benvolio stuck around to, to tell the news. All right, there lies that Tybalt. Oh, on the ground, you can't see him right now. He's on his screen, but don't worry. He's there, he's dead. All right, there lies that Tybalt. Officer, go with me. I charge you in the prince's name, obey. Enter the prince, old Montague, so Lord Montague, Romeo's dad. Lord Capulet, their wives, and a bunch of other people. Right. Prince, where are the wild beginners of this fray? Oh, noble prince, I can discover all. I can tell you everything. Right. The unlucky manage of this fatal brawl. There lies the man slain by young Romeo that slew thy kinsman, brave Mercutio. Lady Capulet, she's got some issues. Tybalt, my cousin, oh, my brother's child, oh, prince, oh, cousin, husband. Oh, the blood is spilled of my dear kinsman, prince, as thou art true, for blood of ours shed blood of Montague. Oh, cousin, cousin. And a lot of times people, she, the person that plays her is not the most popular person in the play. We already know she doesn't really care for her daughter very much, except as a bargaining chip in, in, in um, improving their family's lot by having her marry a count. Uh, in other, issue, other times, it seems like there is just... We know Lord and Lady Capio don't have the happiest of marriages. Is something going on? Did something happen between Lady Capio and Tybalt? She's a little upset, more upset than you would think. And, and the whole confusion of, oh, brothers, husband, cousin. Yeah, there's some lines to draw there. Anyway, um, some people play this off. Um, this early version, something is made, a little bit of made this, of this. Um, if you have a chance to watch the uh, newer version with Ro or, uh, um, Leonardo DiCaprio and Claire Danes, um, where they're driving around in cars, and it's in Venice Beach, um, and they're shooting each other with guns, um, that version makes a bit more of this relationship. Back in the party scene. All right, so, Benvolio, who began this fray? Tybalt here slain, whose Romeo, whom Romeo's hand did slay, 
Romeo that spoke in fair, they didn't bethink how nice the quarrel was. Nice is in like, you know, trivial. Like it doesn't, we don't have anything to fight about. Not like nice, hey, this is a nice fight. Was and urge with all your high displeasure. All this uttered with gentle breath, calm look, knees humbly bowed, could not take truce with the unruly spleen of Tybalt. So Romeo tried to calm Tybalt down. Um, much like, you know, a dog will, if you approach it and it knows you're dominant, it will, it will lower itself to the ground. You know, um, he tried to give all the, the, all, the, all the body language and tried to use whatever verbal language he could to calm Tybalt down. He couldn't do it. All right, Romeo did his best. All right, so if a fight happens in school, and the cameras show that you tried and tried and tried to, to, to stop the fight, you're okay, you're in the clear. But if you swing once, you're in as much trouble as the other person. I don't like it any more than you do, but then I'm not in charge. All right. So. All right. Um, up the unruly spleen of Tybalt, deaf to peace, but that he tilts with peace, piercing steel at bold Mercutio's breast, who all is hot turns deadly point to point and with a martial scorn with one hand beats cold death aside and with the other sends it back to Tybalt, whose dexterity retorts it. Romeo, he cries aloud, hold friends, friends part, and swifter than his tongue, his aged arm beats down their fatal points and twixt them rushes underneath whose arm an envious thrust from Tybalt hit the life of stout Mercutio. And then Tybalt fled. But by and by comes back to Romeo, who had but newly entertained revenge. And to it they go like lightning, for ere I could draw to part them with stout Tybalt slain. And as he fell, did Romeo turn and fly? This is the truth, or let Benvolio die. Lady Capulet, he is a kinsman to the Montague. Affection makes him false. He speaks not true. Some twenty of them fought in this black strife, and all those twenty that would kill one life. All right, so she's got some math issues here. She thinks that because Tybalt was so brave and so wonderful, it would have taken 20 Montagues to kill him. Yeah, whatever. Something's going on there. All right. Prince Romeo slew him. He slew Mercutio, who now bears the price of our dear, the, the, the dear blood dog. Oh, all right, so again, the prince said he would kill whoever fought. Technically, Romeo already took care of that and killed Tybalt, who was fighting. Mercutio was already dead, so Romeo's sort of doing the prince's job here. All right, Lord Montague picks up on this as well. Not Romeo, prince. He was Mercutio's friend. His fault concludes, but what the law should end the life of Tybalt. However, you can't take the law in your own hands. All right, prince, and for that offense, immediately you do exile him hence. I have an interest in your hate's proceedings. My blood for your rude brawls doth lie a bleeding. Again, Mercutio was loosely related to the, the prince in some way. But I'll immerse you with so strong a fine that you shall all repent the loss of mine. I will be deaf to pleading and excuses, nor tears nor prayers shall portress our abuses, therefore use none. Let Romeo hence in haste, else when he is found that hour is his last. Bear hence this body and attend our will. Mercy but murders, pardoning those that kill. All right, so because Romeo sort of did the, the job of the, the law. We're not going to kill him. Unless he's found. All right, he has until, where was that? Um, probably the day's end, or I'm just throwing that in there. All right, but he, he's been banished. He has to leave town. Imagine if you were banished from Boardman. What would you do with your life? It'd be horrid. <sighs> last. All right, now then, again, banishment now is a little bit different than banishment then. All right, banishment then, um, Verona is a city-state, and the next city-state over, let's say, is Milan, and it's really far away, or, or um, there's Genoa, um, or Mantua, or Padua, and, and there, you grow up in an area, and you really value the area you live in. It's not like now where people can grow up and they leave, and there's social mobility. Um, this is your town, you know, you this is your life, and to be separated from it is extremely just, just a horrific uh, idea. All right, so um, we're going to cut off there with this video. We'll pick up with Act 3, Scene 2. Um, remember, Juliet's waiting for Romeo to show up. This is going to be awkward. All right, and um, so we will pick up with that in just a few minutes. Maybe if I can shut this off.